Owen Hayes has asked a question. It's it's a pretty specific question uh, about ASHRAE, uh, both 62.1 and ASHRAE uh, 90, as it relates to ventilation for more energy efficient or low carbon buildings and, and how that's impacting the energy code. And he's referencing uh, the occupancy default tables uh, or table one of ASHRAE 91, it, he says that it cuts ventilation down by over 50% in most areas, which could drive CO2 up in those areas, right? And so we know that uh, that could have an impact on human health. Uh, so his question is, what uh, PPM level of CO2 would you recommend for optimal metabolic health? So that's a pretty specific question. I don't know, you guys can probably tackle it if, if you can. Yeah, that's not a question that can be answered uh, um, in in a sentence or two. But you know, typically CO2, you're looking at um, the amount of oxygen in the in the air. Outdoor air typically is going to be around 450 uh, CO2. Uh, once you start breaching a thousand to 1500, that's when you're not. It's not a health hazard per se, but it is a a uh, um, a level of surrogate analysis of of the amount of of uh, people in a in a particular room and and, and people are breathing. Uh, we had one case, for example, that CO2 was a was a, a significant concern. It was in a school district years ago where uh, we were called out to do an air quality assessment uh, to these a number of schools, and the building in general was very healthy, with the exception of one particular area. The CO2 was actually over 10,000, uh, which would be would be elevated. And 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 what what the, what happened? In fact, well, we we went to the school board meeting, and and there was a large room of people there, and we shared with them the conditions of the of the report that, that we were to share with the with the school board as well as those those uh, faculty and and parents. And so they they got to the room where or the point where we we were we shared with them the CO2 levels were elevated in this particular area, not across the board. And as we share with them the numbers that were there, which was alarming at 10,000, but we also share with them the room number and all of a sudden you heard this, oh my gosh, you know, this this hissing in the in the audience, not happy. And unfortunately, they had just taken the SATs the you know weeks and weeks before, and and they they claimed that three or four students had fallen asleep during the SATs. So they they obviously blamed the you know if if you had a poor grade, you could blame well geez your CO2 was so elevated it made you lethargic, sleepy, tired, and and two or three students now they those students may have you know stayed out late at night and they just. Fall, fall, fall asleep, but that's just an indicator. Uh, it's a, a health performance indicator uh, of a building, and and, and ten thousand is ex exaggerated. You know, we we see a you know thousand fifteen hundred should be that that uh, borderline of what would be considered you know okay in a building. Yeah, no, that, that one thousand. Go ahead. Target supposed. To... No, I said like you know less than one thousand supposed to be the target. Uh, that not exceeding. 1000 ppm that should be the target got and you, you. To, also troy you have to be concerned with just arbitrarily introducing outdoor air if your if your ventilation system isn't filtered is if it's not dehumidifying you're bringing in outdoor unfiltered unconditioned air which is not a good source it's a good source for contamination so by doing one thing you know open up the outside fresh air you're actually causing another problem. So that has to be constantly weighed and evaluated with fresh air ventilation, with dampers, controls, uh, with preconditioned outdoor air, a number of things pre-filtered uh, so we don't contaminate the air that we're trying to uh, fix. Yeah, 